Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel, and today I am working on my 1.9 liter ALH block and prepping it for be reassembled. I don't know why it took me this long. I ordered all the parts for it in March, and they've sat right there the whole time. <laughs> I already did a couple things today. I just cleaned my deck nicely. I cleaned the oil pan, cleaned you know where the main seal goes. Pretty much just been cleaning things so far, so I, uh, you know, skipped that for you. It is time to hone the cylinder bores. Uh, everything else is off the block. I already took the oil squirters out, so we're gonna go ahead and hone this today. We're gonna clean the threads in the block deck today, and then we'll see how far we make it after that. Uh, crank can go in, bearings can go in, tolerances can get checked. Um, but only after everything is super, 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 super clean. So, so this is uh, my reaming setup. This is a head bolt, head stud, whatever you want to call it, and a drill. And all I did was I cut a few notches into it. Give me a second here. Yeah, see that? All I did was take an angle grinder and I cut these notches into it. So it's gonna act basically just like a thread tap, uh, except now it'll conveniently be much longer than my janky thread tap I have. Pretty much ready to hone, but I'm just gonna wipe these out because I cleaned the deck and it got a bunch of gasket junk everywhere and the point of honing is not to smear gasket junk around, it's to smear grit around. I tore this block down a while ago and I checked everything myself, except the crank. I decided to let the cr machine shop do that one, so the machine shop checked and polished my crank. But I checked the cylinders myself and these babies look good. All right, so here's the hone I'm using. This is a flex hone. I like to call it a flesh hone because it's funnier that way. Uh, and I've used it before. I don't think that means it's bad by any means. The only thing that's important with these, because you can't really screw it up, that's the point, is that it's all bendy, uh, is that it needs to be a bit bigger than the cylinder you're honing it with. And as you can see, we're definitely good on that front because it doesn't readily fit in there. Uh, without pressing it, so that means it's going to do its job and put some tension on the walls. Putting oil to go with it, and uh, you get this thing oily, you get the cylinders oily, you get everything oily, and then you go ahead and do it. Both these things are from last time. I rebuilt a 1.6, I had leftover oil, still have this. If you buy it once, you, it's not going anywhere. I think this is like mostly full. I recommended that your RPM range is 600 to 1000, so I think on my DeWalt drill, I just run it basically full speed on my low gear setting. Please use oil, blah, blah. You want to put it in as it's already spinning. You don't just want to shove it in there not spinning. And then you want to kind of do some slower strokes with it. It says 80 to 100 inches per minute. I have no idea what that means. 60 inches every minute would be an inch every second, so. That's not that fast, that's like this. You wanna start off like pretty slow and then you wanna check your work basically and then you go until it looks good basically. And this won't take long. I think there's kind of a worn in spot where the pistons actually traveled and then at the bottom not so much. So I wanna kinda of clean up those discrepancies, make sure everything looks uniform and shiny. And then to finish off, you have to go quite a bit faster to hit your 45 degree angle cross pit hatch. And it says honing time should be approximately 20 to 45 seconds per cylinder. Wash with warm soapy water and a nylon or natural filament tube brush. Continue cleaning the surface afterwards till a white rag comes out clean. So that's very important. This whole process just creates a lot of like micro grit, partially the grit from the hone, partially metal from the walls. Uh, and it's super important to clean that off afterwards, so I will be thoroughly cleaning this. But anyways, that's that's the instructions. It's pretty easy. So last time I did this, I just kind of dumped oil everywhere. Uh, but this time, oil in a spray bottle. Check that out. And if you go slow, you really have to kind of 
pull the trigger pretty hard to make it uh, have a fanned out spray pattern, but it does work. That's way better. Last time I was just dumping it out of the bottle. We're starting on cylinder, what is this, four? Okay, and away we go. At least with this first one, uh, I found, I think last time I did this, you can kind of just do one and get the finish you want. And then once you have the finish on the first one the way you want it, uh, you can just do that again for the rest. Wow, that looks really nice already. The other cylinders look like, and this is what the cylinder looks like after just that little bit. You can see kind of right here. Let me get it to focus right there. You can see there's still kind of a little bit of wear on that cylinder wall. So I'm gonna work on getting that out. Probably do it a little bit longer, um, but it already looks really nice. So nice. I don't know why you wouldn't have, and it looks so good. All right, so this is, again, an old cylinder for comparison, and this is cylinder four after freshly honed. You can see my crosshatch angle after doing that wasn't quite there. I might take one more whack at it to make sure it's a little more 45, but it's definitely enough. I also might just leave it. All right, and we are back. I got a bucket full of pretty much hot bath tamp water and soap and my favorite 399 toilet brush from Ace Hardware. Uh, I think ideally you'd probably use a tube brush or something a little bit different, but this will do. And, uh, you know, let the games begin. We just wash it off. I already cleaned my drip pan too, which is important. Uh, if you don't clean your drip pan, then you'll have quite the mess on your hands afterwards. I'm gonna have quite the mess anyways with this drip pan tips. All right, we're still good. Now, just finished rinsing everything, happy with that. Uh, and now it's time to get these cylinder walls dry before they immediately start rusting. <laughs> and also apply a little bit of oil to them, clean oil. So we're gonna start with dry. And And just do the same down here. Uh, I wanna get everything dry. I wanna make sure the brush I used left minimal pieces of plastic hanging out. Is this five W forty? Maybe move. Some over it. Main bearings. There's two types. The side that goes in the block has the groove and the hole in it. That's how the oil gets in there. Very good, and I cleaned these 
when they're in their packaging they're actually a little bit oily uh, and that's because they're trying to the uh, manufacturer is trying their best not to send you a you know corroded bearing from the beginning okay and so long as the holes and the slots and everything is lining up you're doing it right and I'm just making sure mine are centered as much as possible and seated So I'm now going to put the uh, thrust washers in it. Thrust washers, grooves go outside, tabs go inside, and the block side thrust washer looks like this. I have a bit of assembly oil on the back of it, which is going to help it not fall out of this position immediately. <laughs> uh, here comes two. I just cleaned my crankshaft, which wasn't really that hard. I just hit it with a bunch of compressed air and brake clean. So there we go, there's our thrust washers. And the whole point of assembly lube is that it isn't that runny. So I am building this engine right now, but it probably will not be installed in my car for a minute. All right, and it, this is the first time it is reinstalled on some new bearings. It spins, which is a pretty good start. <laughs> so now I'm gonna go ahead and run a clearance check uh, using a plasti gauge on some of these bearings. Well, lucky for all of you watching at home, my camera died and my microphone died at the same time. And that was just long enough that I already put all this junk on the engine with a plastic gauge in it, only to find out after doing so that I probably used the wrong plastic gauge for the clearance we're going for. So this is a red Plasti gauge uh, and it measures from 0 0.002 to 0 0.006. This is a green Plasti gauge, that's inches. Uh, green Plasti gauge in inches reads from 0 0.001 to 0 0.003. Now the in service spec for oil clearance for these main bearings is 0 0.0012 to 0 0.00 three five or something like that with the service limit meaning how worn it can be at point zero zero six seven or something so let me show you what i found uh pretty much all of them according to red plastic gauge are about point zero zero two uh with the exception of you know one or two looking a little thick you know maybe a little thick excuse me as in terms of in terms of plastic gauge spread thick, uh, the plastic gauge spread wider on some of them than this gauge. And quick crash course on how this works, uh, you go ahead and slap this one. You, it's a little piece of plastic in here, like like uh, like this, like this green thing hanging out. That's what you're putting on. Uh, and then you smush it and then you read, compare it to this chart after the fact, and that tells you how thick it is. So on this chart, I was at the thinnest clearance that it could measure with the red one, which doesn't give me a whole lot of resolution to see if it's too tight. Uh, I can definitely tell that it's not too loose, that's confirmed, uh, but I need to check if it might be too tight potentially, especially because I just read the ARP uh, stud box and oh my goodness, talk about 
giving you a heart attack via instructions. You ready for this? Here I am, I'm installing these and uh, you know, get the usual ARP paper here and then it says footnote in all caps and I was like, okay, I guess I'll read the footnote. When changing from factory fasteners to high strength fasteners, clamping force and tolerances will change. Therefore, it will be necessary to check the main bearing bores for proper size and out of round condition after installation of the studs and align hone the cylinder block if necessary. The main bore should always be al like align honed using the same fasteners and lubricant which will be installed during the final engine assembly. Basically, they're throwing a huge disclaimer on here that their fasteners might squish the main bearing caps too much, in which case they'll be out of round and it'll be totally fucked. <sighs> which is not what I was hoping for. So, uh, this kind of begs its own question. I kind of feel like they put this on here mostly as a disclaimer. Uh, I can't really fathom that this thing is gonna like deflect that much from being torqued slightly higher um but they definitely put it on here for a reason so uh we kind of have two extra steps now to do which is one i used kind of the wrong plasti gauge so we got to do that again uh, so you'll get to see how to do it this time and then it seems like it might be prudent to pull the crank out altogether and put a cap back on it and check it for out of round but that's kind of annoying so I'm also thinking maybe just put the caps on after doing the second plastic gauge well I have to take them back off <laughs> put them all back on with no plastic gauges and just make sure that the thing spins without binding uh, and I think if it spins without binding that might be good enough for me because I don't think I have a good way to check for out of round condition as far as removing old plasti gauge, I don't think you really have to get all of it. I don't think it damages anything, but it's not going to help a clearance measurement. And you do kind of have to scrape it off. Lo and behold, the Haynes manual is spot on with this one. Credit card uh, nails it pretty good. <laughs> Okay, so there's green. I did find out on my first round through that you're definitely better off running a short piece of plasti gauge rather than a long piece. The long pieces just come out looking weird and doing weird things when you crush them. Okay. The other thing I noticed is uh, I like cut it in the paper last time. Don't do that, just get the snips out and cut it that way or scissors you know whatever floats your boat and then it's also bad if you bend it because that makes it hard to read at the end you know if it's bent when you put it on then it makes your pattern not very straight so you know try not to bend them though we're talking about a tiny piece of plastic okay so the reverse process is now to put all the caps back on put all my hardware back in and then, uh, and then we're off to the races. Now what I did notice on my first time through is that if you have it upside down, if you have the block upside down, number one should be readable to you in the normal direction uh, when the back of the block is facing you. Basically all I'm saying is if you put it in like this, it doesn't done work and the cap literally won't go into place. So you definitely place it that way uh, so that it's readable with the back of the block facing you when it's upside down, and that's the correct way to put the caps on. I'm gonna go ahead and get all this in and clamp it all. Tor torque it to spec, which is 60 in three steps, so 20, 40, 60, and then pull everything back off and then we'll check. All right, so the old Haynes manual says 
and I'm just gonna say it now so I remember it. The standard oil clearance on this baby is 0.0012 to 0.0031 inches. 0.0012 to 0.0031. So 0.0012 to 0.0031. Now just to show you what I'm actually comparing here, um, I'm gonna show it to you once and then I'm gonna just take care of it because it's pretty hard to film. But for instance, on this guy right here, you can kind of see this, this center spot here where there's no oil, that is the plastic gauge. So I am literally gonna take this one. Skirt. Oh, it's hard in front of the camera. Gonna take this and match it up to that spot and you can see we're right there it's right about at the 0 0.0015 so that's money that's super money oh okay well that kind of sucks giga dicks um according to this plasti gauge it's very close but it says that I am, most of these are closer to the 0 0.001 than they are the 0 0.0015. Uh, and it could be that they're 0 0.0012 and maybe I'm being a bit neurotic, but that sucks because it's pretty close to being too tight of a tolerance. Um, not what I was expecting. So I might pull everything out and clean it all because what can happen is if there's any amount of dirt underneath these, uh, that'll increase how tight it is. So I might go ahead and do that. Or, you know, the other possibility is it's just the ARP hardware kind of clamping down on that shit. Uh, well, after a second round of, well, this is not my third round of plastic gauge hell, Second round of green plastic gauge hell, uh, it definitely is coming out such that it's close. It's quite close. It's quite, quite close, but I think it's also just not close enough that it's fine. And what I mean by that is it's not 0 0.0015, which is like I was saying last time, kind of the smaller deviation but it's also not 0 0.001. So I think these are just brand new bearings and it's really tight and it's probably 0 0.0012 and I don't have any more accuracy to take from the plastic gauge, but it's bigger than 0 0.001 and smaller than 0 0.0015. So we're gonna call that good. We're gonna call it good. We're gonna clean this shit. Uh, and now I need to scrape all the plastic gauge shit off and I need to put my caps on one more time uh, with some assembly lube so I can check if the crankshaft's binding or not with the ARP studs in there because I haven't been able to spin it yet with the studs on because we're doing the plastic gauge stuff. But that clearance looks good, which is kind of a good note for the way those things clamp too. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this again, install the bearings again, and then we'll recheck to make sure it spins, and if it spins, I'm gonna call it good. If it's not binding and it doesn't take a ton of force to spin it, I ain't getting this Noah line honed. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are on a, our final torque sequence here after three Plasti Gauge checks, no less. I just did the first torque to 20 foot-pounds and the crankshaft is buttery, so we're going to 40. And, oh, oh man, that's luxurious. And just to be sure, oh my goodness, I'm so glad this spins. And I realize that's probably not like the best test of out of roundness is whether it spins or not. Like maybe I'll just have a bearing failure in like 20,000 miles. Uh, but well, for the record, 20,000 miles is way more than I got out of my last engine build. So if it lasts that long, we're doing good. <laughs> that wasn't a dig on my engine build either. That was a dig on my turbo uh, control ability. Okie dokie. So uh, 
it's kind of late, and I'm not trying to be that guy in the memes uh, who's out in his garage at 2 a.m. with music blaring. So, <laughs> I think I'm going to call it a night right here. But this is awesome, awesome progress. Uh, aside from pulling a little bit of lint out here and there, the crankshaft is in the car. It spins really nice. I think that could spin for a long time. And the ARP hardware is in and it looks great and I'm stoked on it. Uh, interesting that that one is a little deeper than the rest. At any rate, I think that's enough for this video. Uh, that was cleaning your head stud holes. That was honing the block. And that was how to install a crankshaft on new bearings and check your clearances very excruciatingly, painstakingly accurately, and also installing a crankshaft in your motor. And the next one I'm more excited for. I feel like getting the crank in is a necessary step, but it's not my favorite thing. Certainly putting the pistons and the rods together and putting them in the motor is my favorite thing. And that'll be next video probably pistons, rods, oil pump, whatever else. <laughs> some main seals perhaps, and maybe some engine painting eventually. At any rate, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy my content and maybe hit the little bell thing if you wanna be notified that I put out content. Be a crazy thought. Have a good night out there.